This is the engine shop of Air France Industry. So Air France Industry is one of the longtime client of LOCAD. And as you can see, this is not exactly an office. This is the place where the aircraft engines get maintained and repaired. And it's a pleasure to me, for me to be with uh, Fanny Kins today. So Fanny, could you tell us a little bit about, uh, about yourself and what you're doing at uh, Air France Industry? I'm uh, quite recent in Air France Industry. I joined a little over a year ago. And uh, before I was working in the revenue management of uh, Air France, so nothing to do with supply chain. And uh, now, uh, since a little, little over a year ago, I joined uh, Air France Industry. And I'm now in charge of um, supply chain and assets for the engine department. And so what do you think uh, what do you find uh, interesting about, uh, about your, your current role, your current position at Air France? Uh, I think it's very interesting and uh, really uh, full of passion. Uh, it's a job where you have a mix of uh, operations because our goal is to get the engines repaired as quick as possible. And, but we also have a link to the external world. Uh, we are uh, impacted by the supply chain, uh, the global uh, worldwide supply chain. And also uh, we have to work with our suppliers. So it's a mix of um, internal uh, topics and also uh, external uh, factors. For, for an audience who is not um, specialized in, uh, in aviation, who, uh, who knows very little about the, the aviation supply chain, could you tell us a little bit about what um, the maintenance of aircraft, and more specifically in your, in your case, aircraft, um, aircraft engines entail? Uh, so an engine is a quite a complex, uh, complex piece, as you can see behind. Um, an engine uh, has a lifespan of several decades and along its life it's going to be repaired several times, uh, either through um, um, scheduled repairs, but also unexpected uh, repairs when there's something on the plane and that needs to be done. Uh, here where you can see it's uh, where the, the schedule, most of the repaired, uh, scheduled repaired uh, repairations uh, occur. Uh, so we bring the engine in uh, and the engine is going to be completely dis disassembled and inspected. Um, some parts will be scrapped, some parts will be repaired, some, some parts will be extended and then all of these parts will be put together. Uh, an engine is quite massive, as you can see. Uh, the, the, the biggest ones uh, can measure up to uh, 13, um, 7 meters and can weigh up to 13 tons. And when we disassemble, disassemble them completely, uh, it can take up to, it, it represents uh, almost uh, 10,000 parts. So it's very complex and um, it, it can be from the smallest part uh, from a bolt that can cost uh, a few dollars to uh, a, a low pressure turbine in the case, which is huge and can cost up to a million dollars. One of the interesting things is that uh, the aviation industry has become incredibly safe. I mean, the, and especially those aircraft engines, which are massively complex, they operate high altitude, high temperature or low temperature so for some parts, high pressure or low pressure for some other parts. Um, and, and all of that is, uh, I would say, requires a, a lot of very precise engineering. Um, so could you give us some ideas on the sort of, you know, uh, of, of the complexity that it entails in terms of, of supply chain, in terms of traceability, in terms of processes around those, those engines. Uh, indeed, we are in a, in, a, in a field which is highly regulated because uh, flight security is our main, our only priority, our main priority. Uh, so all the parts are traced. Um, we have also uh, regulations with our suppliers who uh, we, not, we cannot buy any parts uh, on the market. We need to buy them by agreed uh, suppliers. They need to be repaired with uh, uh, specific uh, agreed upon uh, suppliers. Um, and then when we reassemble the, uh, the, uh, the engine, we cannot put any parts in the engine. We also need to check that uh, either we take the parts from the original engines or the ones that are repaired, or we can do switch between different engines, but it requires technical um, validation. So we need to work also very closely with the technical departments and the engineering departments. And from a supply chain perspective, you see, as we described, we have, we have thousands of parts, something like 10,000. And those parts are, some of them are actually very, very costly because it's very precise engineering, plus it's, they are actually quite massive. Um, a question is, why not just wait until the aircraft engine show up here in this facility, diagnose the exact list of parts that we need, and then order the parts from all those, I would say, very specialized suppliers that, that are eligible to, 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 do the sort, to, to provide the sort of parts that can be mounted on, the, on those engines. Uh, 
we could do that. We could wait for the engine to come in to inspect all the parts and then decide what to do. But the problem is that it would take a lot of time because then we would need to, to order some parts, wait for them to, to arrive, for the parts that need to be repaired, send them to the um, uh, repair uh, shop then have them back. And an engine uh, is a huge asset. So when it's, when it's on the ground, uh, we need to um, put it back on the plane as soon as possible. So we need the whole uh, shop repair to be as, as short as possible. Um, so that's why we anticipate. Uh, we know that some parts will be scrapped, so we can order them uh, in advance. Uh, we also have a stock in place. We have a certain number of parts on the shelf so that when the, uh, the engine is in the shop, we can directly take these parts from the shelf and uh, reassemble the, the engine as soon as possible. And as we can see, I mean, so the, the, the engine is quite complex. There is, there is thousands of parts. There is a lot of people involved, a lot of suppliers. Uh, and, and, uh, and obviously, there are some expected timelines, as you, as you pointed out. So the, the, the engine has to go back to an aircraft and fly again. Um, and, what, from your perspective, what are the biggest supply chain challenges in making all of this happen, you know, while keeping, you know, cost and delays under control? What, what are the sort of main, I would say, difficulties associated with, this, uh, with, uh, with those operations? I would say the, the, the first difficulty in our, our main job is to um, balance uh, the operational efficiency and the cost, because we could, we could have a a point of view where we put uh, a maximum of uh, parts on the shelf, but that would cost us a lot too much money. We uh, just to give you a figure, um, the amount of stock we have today is around several hundreds of millions of dollars. So um, we really have to balance, uh, and that's the, our main goal and the, the real complexity we have to deal with. And then on top of that, there is the everyday life where the supply chain does not react, uh, does not go as quick as we would like, especially today where we have delays in uh, transports, where we have suppliers that are facing difficulties uh, in the post pandemic. So all of this uh, are like a little, um, stones in our shoes <laughs> uh, and that need that that implies that we have to adapt all the time we have a specific uh, situations all the time where we have to find solutions and so LOCAD and Air France industry started to work together almost half a decade ago now it has been quite a while um, uh, I know that you arrived recently but from your perspective um, what was pretty much the sort of situation at Air France industry before I would say the 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 advent of, of LOCAD how, how would you describe you know again from a supply chain perspective uh, I think that before Lo we had the help from LOCAD before we started working with LOCAD um, we did a lot of things, but we really challenged, We really had a challenge with the data. Uh, we have a lot of data all over the place. We have many systems and we, we couldn't unlock all the, uh, the potential from the data. So we did things very manually. Uh, it was very cumbersome. And uh, LOCAD really helped us to, uh, at the beginning, really just unleash the potential from the data. In your own words, uh, how, how would you describe what LOCAD is actually doing for, for Air France industry? Uh, at least for, our, for our, on my department or for the engine department, uh, LOCAD is really um, adding a lot of value and, and really challenging us and helping us to develop models to better um, size the level of stocks we need. Um, as I said, it's very expensive. So we need to constantly challenge ourselves and see where there are um, uh, economic gains, especially in our, our current situation. And LOCAD really helps us to um, modelize and uh, create algorithms um, that um, help us take smarter decisions and also more uh, adaptive uh, decisions. I believe uh, that the LOCAD approach is fairly unusual. Obviously, I mean, my uh, being the CEO of LOCAD, I, I, I tend to be biased and thinking that it's superior, but I think it's a fair assessment to say it's fairly unusual. Uh, what, what do you think? What surprised you uh, the most, maybe, about the, um, the sort of ways and techniques that LOCAD is, is using at, uh, at Air France Industry? So I'm really not an expert in uh, in data science or in uh, in, uh, yeah, in data science. But uh, from my perspective, uh, what really astonishes me is the uh, ability to understand our uh, problematics. Uh, you are not experts of uh, the um, aircraft industry and engine industry, but nevertheless, when we have a question, you always um, look at is able to understand our needs and to provide uh, very quickly a first solution and then a solution on which we can build. And uh, we have a, it's really an iterative approach. And what's really um, uh, pleasant is that we can very quickly see the first results. And 
when you say low-cat, actually more, more specifically in the low-cat terminology, those are the teams of supply chain scientists. And could you tell us uh, a little bit about, you know, the way you interact with those supply chain scientists, what it, what it looks like from your perspective? Do they, uh, do they ask uh, for your opinion on advanced statistical algorithms? What, what is the sort of discussion that you're having with, uh, with those people? Uh, it's really a, a partnership because we arrive with our expertise uh, of our domains and then uh, we have some ideas and then really confront them with the, the supply chain uh, knowledge that you have. And you can look, the look at tips can really um, point to us uh, uh, spots, blind spots that we have or um, help us also to have a more um, uh, uh, a higher view of, uh, of our problematics. And it really um, helps us to move forward. Look had had the chance for half a decade already to, to, to be working with, uh, with the airfronts industry. Uh, could you shed some light you know, on the sort of value that Air France is finding in, in having LOCAD around? Uh, well, I mentioned the data. Um, it was really, really, really a big step because thanks to the work that LOCAD did, we now have uh, KPIs to follow our supply chain. We have dashboards um, to uh, monitor and to track uh, what's going on in our supply chain. And then there's also big projects that are ongoing. Uh, that are, we are uh, working on with, with LUCAD. Um, so, for example, the, uh, uh, our, our estimations of scraps. Uh, so it's the uh, which parts uh, are going to be, what the amount of uh, parts that can be uh, continued or scrapped. So it's a, it's a very important um, uh, input for us. Uh, and uh, LUCAD helps us to put the statistics, uh, statistical models to better um, forecast uh, these, uh, these type of uh, things. Overall, I would say the, the aviation supply chain is quite demanding. I mean, the, just the sheer technical complexity of um, the sort of equipment that are being processed. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot more complex than, let's say, bakery or many, you know, very simple, um, uh, much simpler supply chain. And um, what are the sort of, of, of qualities that you're looking for in your, in your colleagues? I mean, obviously, this is a team effort. You're not uh, one person. It's actually an entire company to, um, to be able to, to do this. Uh, to, to orchestrate all what it takes you know, to, for, to maintain and repair those, those engines. So what sort of skills and maybe experience or qualities are you looking for in your, in your colleagues? What's great about the supply chain is that uh, it's, uh, it's a teamwork and it's also a different type of jobs. We have people that are very analytical, uh, that can do forecast and can uh, plan ahead. Uh, we have some people that are very operational, that need to um, handle the day-to-day -day work. Um, so it's a, some people are really more into um, cooperation and um, vendor management with our suppliers. Uh, so it's really, a, there's a lot of qualities that we look for because we have different uh, types of jobs uh, within the supply chain. But I would say the main uh, qualities that we look for are um, uh, curiosity because it's an always evolving uh, domain. Uh, teamwork because we really need to work together. Uh, the supply chain is, uh, by definition, it's every, everyone, everyone is connected together, so we need to be able to work ever, uh, together. Um, and uh, and uh, enthusiasm for the product and uh, for uh, and also I would say I would add um, a sense of the client, the customer focus, because our customers is in the end the airlines that we serve, but also internally um, the mechanics that need to reassemble the uh, the uh, the engine. Fanny, thank you very much for uh, welcoming us in this uh, incredible engine shop. Thank you very much.